Amen. Well, let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians. And we had such a wonderful time here last week with our special uh, guest, with uh, Rick and Elizabeth Johnson, He's my family, my cousin. They were here with us last week, and God just used them mightily. And I've had uh, just so much response this week from different people texting about what that word uh, meant to them uh, of, of, of those dream seeds that God plants on the inside of us and not letting the enemy steal your dreams that he's given you and your purpose that he's given you. So don't just take that word last Sunday and say, oh, time to move on to this week. New word, new thing. You, every time you hear the word, you, you let that get implanted. You know, the, the, the title of that message was Dream Seed. So let that seed get planted on the inside of you to take some root. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, all right, all right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, we're continuing our study. And uh, like I said, if you hear ringing and stuff like that, they are working on that. We've got, the only way we can work on that is for us to do this. So uh, just, just ignore that. I'm going to, it probably bothers me that it's bothering you. And I will try to ignore that and, and move right on through. But we've been looking at God's timetable. And, and, and so as we're in here in the book of 2 Thessalonians, there's so much good stuff. And, and I, I'm trying to be faithful in, in studying it and, and getting it. And I told Tina this week, and I mean this with all, I, I don't want you to, to get bored with what I'm teaching you because it's valuable information from you. Uh, matter of fact, I want to just read through verses 3 through 10 here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and, and I want you to hear uh, what Paul is saying to him. And, and of course, this very first part of this sentence, he says, let no one deceive you by any means. And so this is the reason that that, that, that I, I've been on this same subject area now for the last three messages because of what he said here. Let no man deceive you in any way. We, we, live, in a, we live in a very deceptive time. You know, and the reason why I say we, there's always been deception, but we haven't always had the internet. We haven't always had social media. And, and, and that is something that's prevalent today, and it's very strong today, which there's so much good that can happen through the social media, but there's also a lot of deception that can take place. Uh, there's things that we can hear that, that even from, from believers, from Christians, from pastors, and, and, it, and it sounds real good, but it's just there's no truth, <laughs> And, and, and it doesn't matter how it sounds. It doesn't matter how eloquent it is. Uh, I don't care if somebody said they had a dream about it. I don't care if they said they got some special revelation. If it doesn't come from this book, then it needs to not even, you know, like some things you allow to go in in one ear and out the other. But if it doesn't line up with this book, you don't even need to let it in the ear gate at all. And so that's why it's important that we get into the word of God. And this is why it's important that Paul says, let no one deceive you by any means. He goes on to say, for the day, and it's capitalized, he's talking about the day of the Lord, uh, 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 that time that, 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 that the tribulation will begin to take place and God's going to begin to get in his timetable uh, of the future. He says, for that day will not come unless the falling away, and what we learned last week about, a couple weeks ago about that word falling away, is it literally is talking about a, a different form of what we call falling away. But that Greek word literally means a departure. And he's literally talking about us, the church, is going to be taken out of the way. So nothing can happen about the day of the Lord, this time of the tribulation, unless something happens first. And that is that we believers will be taken out of the way. You and I as the body of Christ are literally the, 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 book, the, the, the bookends or the holding of those events. God is using us, the church, to be the bookends because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so the Holy Spirit, as long as he is here, it's holding all that back and he's here in us. And so we've got to be out of the way for that day to begin. 
And so when someone comes up and begins to put fear in you that you're going to have to, you're going to take the mark of the beast and you better be, all that kind of stuff gets people very, you know, tense. I remember as a child going, man, you know, some of these things that I would hear preachers preach and it would, it would scare me, you know, and I would be like, well, that can't come from God because he says, I haven't given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. And so that's what we walk in. So I can't be deceived about that day because it will not come unless there's a departure that comes first. He says, and the man of sin, we talked about him and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on him a little bit more in a minute. That man of sin is revealed the son of perdition. And, and we give him two names there, the man of sin, son of perdition. You, we, we also use some other words. We use the antichrist, the, all the same person. And then this is what it says about him in verse four, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called or that is worship. Now, if you one thing you want to know about Satan is he doesn't change his MO. Remember when Satan was, was, was Lucifer and he was actually the worship leader in heaven. And he decided that he wanted to exalt himself above the throne of God. And so that hasn't changed, even though that, that battle didn't last very long. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we have this picture in our mind that, you know, this thing went on for 15 rounds and it was tough and it was close and it was, I didn't know, man, they, you know, that they brought Jesus and he, he, he went to the cross and I mean, this was, this was close. It wasn't close folks. The Bible says that when he decided to ex try to make his throne up above, above God, the Bible says as he was cast down as lightning. If you've ever watched lightning, I love it when people will get a picture of lightning. You've got to be taking a bunch of pictures to get the lightning because it, by the time you see it, forget your camera. It's gone. That's how fast it Well, that's how fast that battle was. And so just as fast as the battle was from Satan being thrust down, from trying to exalt his throne, he's going to, in the blink, in the moment of an eye, is going to be the same way when he raptures the church. And so God does everything sometimes slow, but man, a lot of things he just does just like that. And this is one of those things. And so he says that, that once again, that when the Antichrist comes, which is going to be in, that person will be under the influence of Satan. This person is going to do the same thing, going to try to exalt himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Boy, you want to talk about deception. He says, do you not remember when I was still with you, I told you these things. So obviously he's reminding them, Paul is, of stuff he had already said to them in person when he was there with them. And so what is Paul doing? He's repeating himself. Well, what have I been doing over the last three times I pray? I'm repeating myself because we need to get this in our spirit. Verse six says, and now you know what is holding back or restraining that you may be revealed in his own time. Then he talks about a mystery. He says, for the mystery of lawlessness, lawlessness is already at work. Now we already know that they're, they're, the spirit of Antichrist is already going on, always has been. Everywhere we go. And it's already at work. Only the Antichrist himself cannot come on the scene. And he says here, who, who, he's being now restrained. And he says, and will do so until he is taken out of the way. And so until the Holy Spirit is gone, that's the he, he can't happen. Then in verse 8, and then once that happens, then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. Now, remember, today, you know, one of the things he says will happen when the Holy Spirit is here, which he is here, is we'll see signs and, and wonders. But we have to be careful about signs and wonders. Matter of fact, there's a scripture that says it's a rebellious generation that seeks after signs and wonders. 
See, if you're just always looking for another sign, if you're always just looking, well, if God will just show up and do some wonder, if God will just show up then, well, do you know that Satan has the ability to do the same thing? And so if he has the ability to do this, because remember, this just came through my head, and so I'll talk about it. M Moses, when he went and was dealing with, uh, with uh, Egypt, everything that he was able to do that was given by God to show this miraculous wonders of God, their people was able to do it too. See, so we got to be careful of that. So we can't, we can't find ourselves just seeking after a sign and a wonder. We're moved by faith and faith alone. We don't have to see it to believe it. We don't have to feel it to believe it. We just take God at his word. That's faith. We're not, you know, yes, signs and wonders are wonderful. But you know, signs and wonders actually are for the lost world to see the magnificence of God. But we have too many church people that are run 500 miles to see a sign and wonder and won't walk across the street to hear the word of God. And, and, that is, and that's why he says we have to be very sober-minded about not being deceived. And we have to be very careful of that. And so don't let that be your motivation because those that are left here when, when the tribulation comes in, the, the lost Oh, they're, they're going to have some time because he says that, that, this, that this Antichrist is going to come in with all power, signs, and I love this, lying wonders. And in verse 10 says, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. See, right now is the time of the love of the truth. Right now, truth has been revealed. Right now is the grace period. Right now is for those who are lost to, by faith, place their faith and trust in Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now is that time. You can't say, well, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for the rapture to take place. And then before it gets bad, then. If you don't do it now, you won't do it then. If the Holy Spirit is drawing you today, today you better do it. You better do it today because there's going to be these lying signs and lying wonders and, and, and this deception is going to take place to all of those because they did not receive the love of the truth that might be, then they might be saved. And so they had that opportunity and they literally, I'm not going to go into that right now, but in verse 11, he talks about how he's going to deceive all of those. They're going to fall for the, for the power. They're going to fall for those signs and they're going to fall for those lying wonders. But you and I need to know a truth about the body of Christ is that we don't have to fear that. Our job when we hear this is to put us on alert that we are running out of time to share the gospel. That's what we have been put on this earth to do. The Bible says we are ambassadors of Christ. We're to share the message of reconciliation. That is our ministry. You know, I, I've, I've done this before in the past at, at different places. That I do it a lot if I go off somewhere because sometimes if I'm going off and I'm preaching somewhere, there'll be other pastors in the house. But I won't say that. I'll say, how many ministers do I have here today? And, 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 and lo and behold, I'll raise my hand and, and those guys who are pastors or those ladies will raise their hands. And everybody else is just looking around like, oh, we have ministers in the house. You need to look in the mirror because if you're a believer today, guess what? You are a minister. You don't have to go to seminary to be a minister. You don't have to go to Bible college to be a minister. The very moment that you're placed in the body of Christ by your faith in the gospel, you then have been made a minister. So everybody is a minister that's a believer. And we're ministering the message of reconciliation because we don't want to, we want to see as many as we can come into the body of Christ. We don't want any man to perish. We don't need any, any person to miss. And so we need, this is why we need to understand what we're living in today. So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul makes it plain that this day of the Lord, the day of wrath, this fixation, this tribulation, 
and the judgment cannot come until the departure of the church, the body of Christ. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it, and I'm going to keep saying it because just recently I heard someone say, oh, man, you know, we're, 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 we're waiting on, on the second coming of Christ. No, we're not. We're not waiting on the second coming. We're waiting on the rapture, two separate events. You can read about it uh, over in the book of Matthew. You can read about the second coming. Paul shares about the rapture. The gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John doesn't talk about the rapture at all. It doesn't even talk about it. doesn't even mention it. It, it, it was a mystery still. And things about mysteries is I love it when they get revealed and, and, and he revealed it through the Apostle Paul through what we're look, looking at and, and learning about from 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. But this time of the second coming is going to be a true time. He is going to come back. The good news is he's coming back with his church. When he comes back the second time, matter of fact, he's coming back to the same place that he left the same place he left, when he, when he left on that mountain, and, 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 and it says that he went up before the disciples, and the disciples all were standing there watching him go up, and they just stood there, and then an angel of the Lord came and said, what are you doing? Why are you standing here gazing? In other words, I gave you work to do. He's gone. Now get busy doing what I called you to do. You know? And so they had to get a little check moment because their time now was to get busy after he's left, because he told him, he says, the same manner I left is the same manner I'm coming back. And so he's literally, there's Old Testament scripture where he's literally going to come back to the same exact place. Feet first. Matter of fact, he's going to split that mountain in half. It's really going to be cool. But that, and by the way, we're coming with him. So when he does that. And so that's going to be the second coming of Christ. And, and this is something that you can read about in prophecy, because everything with the second coming is prophesied. Everything with the rapture is not prophesied. And so anytime you're hearing prophecy about the end time, you're hearing prophecy of the second coming of Christ. And so some of that you'll find in, in, in the book of Daniel. And, and there are people, I, I, there are actually people out there who think Daniel uh, was, uh, was, a, was, a, was a forgery. That, 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 that he obviously, a person named Daniel didn't write this because it's too accurate with what Jesus and what uh, is talked about in the book of Matthew. They had to have been written after Matthew. And no, that's just how God works. That he wrote something so many thousands of years ago and told Daniel, Daniel writes about it, and then begins to start unwinding and taking place. Uh, matter of fact, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15 says, uh, he says, therefore, when you see, this is, this is the Lord speaking, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the Daniel prophet standing in the holy place, whosoever reads, let, them un let him understand. So if, if, if Daniel was a forgery, then Jesus must be also. Because it was Jesus that gave the concrete that Daniel knew what he was talking about. Because he says, this is what was spoken of by Daniel all those years ago that he began to tell them about. And so if we can't believe the words of, of the Lord, then we might as well just take the whole book and throw it away. You know, I had somebody say one time, well, I mean, I, I believe that this contains the word of God. If it just contains, and that means, means, you know, there's some of it that maybe not. Then how am I going to know, how am I, how am I, how am I going to know what to trust in? Because if I don't know, then I might as well just get rid of it all. So either it's all truth or it's no truth. There is no in-between truth. Right? I mean, either, either something's the truth or it's, an, or it's a lie. You know, you know, I know sometimes we, we put little white lies, like that's not quite a lie. But guess what? It's a lie. You know, I think I used this one time. It's about being a little pregnant. Either you is or you ain't. 
There's no little about it, you know? And so it's either the truth or it's not a truth. And so we, we need to understand that, that, that you know, the Satan is going to always try to give counterfeits and stuff. And so when, if the Lord says something, we can take it. If Daniel said something, we can take it because it is now the word of God. He said, well, it was written by man. Yeah, but it was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. They couldn't have written. And if they had said something that wasn't of God, it would not have made it in print to the word of God. And if you can't trust that, then here's what you need. Faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So get into the word, get out of all the other books, quit listening to junk on, on, on YouTube, quit following after podcasts that are not preaching and teaching the rightly divided word of God. Amen? And because we want to stay on our, our target. So, so this, the prophet Daniel was speaking these things. So today, as we'll look at some of, of the scriptures here, you can go with me over to the book of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, we're going to kind of hit on some of these things. Remember, we called him in Thessalonians the man of sin. He was called the son of perdition. Uh, we also talked a couple weeks ago about him being the Antichrist. We also called him the great counterfeiter. And so the, the Antichrist doesn't just mean he's against Christ. It meant he was a false Christ. He's a counterfeit. And, and, and so we want to understand that. Some scriptures refer to him as the beast, especially in Revelations, the beast. Uh, and of course, the main reason for that is, is that he will be so heartless. We think Satan is heartless now. Wait till this, this, the, when this time comes on the earth. And, and, and of course, we'll be in heaven. But, but what's going to face on, on this earth it is like never seen before. He's going to be so heartless and he's going to be so bestial and his power and what he's going to be coming and doing. And he's going to have the power of Satan behind him. Good news for us is right now we have the power of the Holy Spirit in and through us. You have the same power that I have access to power to. Every, every great you know, person you see online, you think, boy, that Billy Graham, he was something else. Did you know that the same power that worked in Billy Graham is the same power that's in you? And we need to know that. We, we go around with power. Amen? We, we, we need to quit walking around weak like we don't have anything. We have the power of God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. And you need to know that today and get that. So always remember that, that th these terms of, uh, of, of the son of, uh, son of sin, the, the, the son of perdition, the, all these great is, is going to come about. And, and we believe that it's going to be a great world political ruler that's coming. And he's going to be able to do what, what, what every president maybe in America, what every leader across the world has tried to do is bring world peace. Everybody's tried. When this guy comes, it's going to be the counterfeit peace. Everybody, everybody that's going to, they're going to, so many, a great majority are going to fall for the power, the signs, and the lying wonders of this person. And they're just going to be like, this is what we've been waiting on. I knew if we, because they're going to explain us being gone. You know, we're, you think it's going to be a shock. We're all going to disappear because of the rapture. But this guy is going to be able to come on the scene and go, everybody calm down. Now that we've got rid of the riffraff, now that we've gotten those people out of the way. Remember, we've been trying to get them out. We've been trying to get them off social media. We've been trying to get them out of this world for so long because of who they are. It is, we have finally accomplished it. And then he's going to step in and people are going to begin to fall for that counterfeiter. They're going to begin to fall for that political leader. And he's going to bring a, it's going to be a false peace, but it's going to look like, wow, because we know that the Prince of Peace is on his way because he'll be coming back for the second coming. And they missed him the first time because the Prince of Peace came already. Now, Israel is looking for him the first time. That's how blind they are. And the Bible says that they were blinded. And so they missed him. But he's coming back again. And he will be true peace. But he's good. The, 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 the Antichrist is, with the power of Satan is going to bring forth this, this, this fake counterfeit peace. And, 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 and I, as I've said, I said a couple weeks ago, I'll say it again today. I personally think that this person is already alive. I think they're already alive. 
uh, maybe not in the forefront as we would think uh, at this moment. Uh, People say, well, who do you think it is? And I'll, and I'll just be honest with you. I can have opinions, but you know what? You know, opinions don't matter. You know, I, I have to watch what I say sometimes about opinions. I'll move on from that. Y'all know what opinions do. Okay. So, so, so you know, that, that would just be my opinion. And I'm not going to sit up here and preach it and tell you because then you'll go off and tell somebody else, and, and then somebody else will think, well, is that true? Well, my preacher said it. Well, it must be true then if he said it. And so you start believing it, and then you tell somebody else, and the next thing you know, everybody's running around thinking who they believe the Antichrist is. And, and, and so I'm not even going to tell you my opinion, because my opinion don't matter, because I don't know who he is, and I don't really care who he is, because once he's revealed, I'm going to be out of the way anyhow. And so I don't need to worry about that. But I do believe he's already alive. I believe he's already, to my belief, he's already in Western Europe. I believe that he's in that area already. And he already has some, but not a great influence. Okay? But I believe that he's going to, and he's going to, man, he's going to, he's going to really f- fool some people. But it doesn't matter. The fact is, we know this is coming. And so for us, we are going to be able to know truth from a lie. And so when someone tries to teach us something different, we can go, wait a minute, that's not what the word says. And that's what, that's what matters. Look there in Daniel chapter 9. Uh, very quickly, I, I'm going to go down to verse 24, but I, I, I wanted to read the, the end of verse 26. Uh, he says, and, and the people of the prince. Now, I want you to see that word prince. Anytime you hear about the Prince of Peace, the word Prince is capitalized, okay? In this scripture, it says, and the people of the Prince, and that Prince is a lowercase. See, he's not going to be the Prince of Peace, but he's going to come out uh, as the Prince. And so the people of the Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuaries. Now, as we know, the, the seven years of tribulation is broke up into three and a half and three and a half. Now, remember, when he comes on the scene, it's going to look, I mean, it's going to, he's going to fake some people out. He's going to, the nation of Israel is looking for the Messiah and they're going to fall for this because what's going to happen is they're finally going to get their temple back. They've been waiting for the temple. The temple has not been built yet. Matter of fact, where the temple sits right now, where the old temple was, there actually is a Muslim mosque that sits there right now. Okay. But one day there'll be the temple will be set back up there. And and during this time, this Antichrist is going to allow Israel to begin back their temple worship. They'll begin doing all their Things they did of old, they'll be doing their sacrifices. They'll be doing, temple stuff is going to go on. It's going to look like, wow, finally. But then at the end of three and a half years, it's going to get bad. Because he's going to come in and he's going to desecrate the temple. And, and, and so it, it, and, then, and then you literally can say all hell is going to break loose. Because that's what's, that's what's going to happen. And so he's, he, he talks about this prince doing that. Now back in 24, it says, and I'm, I'm giving you some time frames, and I'm going to do my best to keep us with this and don't lose me on this, because remember in prophecy, a lot of things are, are symbolisms and things like that. And so prophecy of Daniel, all those thousands of years ago, he is speaking something about the nation of Israel. And here's what he says to them. 70 weeks are determined for your people. This was from God to Daniel. 70 weeks. Now, in scripture and prophecy, when you see the word weeks, it is in actual years of weeks, okay? And so don't just think, wait a minute, 70 weeks? Well, that's hard to take. Well, 70 weeks of years is 490 years. And so there was a declaration put on the nation of Israel from God to the prophet Daniel, that there's going to be 490 years for the nation of Israel. So everything in prophecy for Israel is always on a timetable. We don't do timetables for the church because there is no timetable. We don't know when the rapture is going to take place. Could take place right now. 
Could be five years from now. Could be 10 years from now. I have no idea. I love when people will mock the church and they go, boy, you preachers have been saying that, that, that all this was going to happen for 50 and 60 and 70 years. And my answer is always the same. Well, we closer now than we were 50 or 67 years ago. So you, you're really running out of time because you, you're on borrowed time now because if, if, if they were saying that 70 years ago, well, Paul was saying it even longer than that in Thessalonians, we're closer. We're closer. And, and, and it's like you, you talk about the, 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 the snowball going down a hill and, you know, we've all seen the cartoons and you can start with a little snowball and they begin to roll it. And what begins to happen? It begins to get larger, but it also begins to get faster. And that's what we're seeing today. It just, you know, we all say it. It's like when I was a kid, time just stood still, but now it just seems like time flies today. I mean, we were just in 2020, you know, we're headed to 24 now. I mean, just like that, it's that quick. It's like a snowball down the hill getting faster and faster. This is what we're doing. This is why I don't think that it'll be much longer before the rapture because that snowball is going down the hill and it's gotten so large and it's gotten so fast. I don't, how much faster can it go? You know, so I know we're getting close, but for the nation of Israel, they have prophesied times on them. And it was 490 years. 70 weeks are determined for your people. Now, I love when God speaks to the prophets because here's what you will see. When the nation of Israel is in the outs with God, he doesn't call them my people. When he was dealing with Moses, he said, your people. As he's dealing with Daniel, um, Daniel, they're actually in exile. And he calls them your people. But when they come into their place and when they're being obedient, he calls them my people. That's interesting. And you will see that through scripture. But him, between him calling them my people and your people. It's kind of like what we do at my house when I go, your kids... Tina are acting like your side of the family and you need to do something. But when they act like they supposed to, I go, you know, my kids are awesome. Right. And so, and so I don't feel so bad because God did it with his people too. All right. When they, when they ain't acting right, them your people, Moses, them your people, Daniel, them your people, they doing right. That mine. And you see that, uh, you know, so here's one of those times he calls them your people, Daniel, because they're, they're not in the place uh, that they need to be in. And so, uh, you know, so realize that, that at the time that God is speaking to them, remember Israel is in captivity. They're, they're actually in Babylon. Babylonian captivity uh, being there. That means they were out of the blessing of Jerusalem because remember Old Testament work, you did, you got blessing, you didn't, you got curse. Under the new covenant that we're under the day, we get all the blessing, but he took the curse. So, so you know, some people say, well, I, I want to live under the old covenant like they had. No, 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 not me. You're welcome to try that. I'm not living in that because I know me and, and I have my faults and my fears. I'd spend more time being your people than instead of my people, you know. And so I don't want to live that. I want to live under grace where I am he is and he is mine. Amen. And so that's what we have today. And so at this time, uh, they, they have no temple. They had no priesthood. Why? Because they're in Babylonian captivity. And so they had none of that. And so they were not God's people. He was saying they were your people. And so uh, when Christ returns, Israel will once again become God's covenant people. The Bible literally says that he's divorced them. That he has divorced them. You know, now it wasn't by chance. God had a plan. He knew what he was doing. Matter of fact, I, I don't understand this. But he came unto his own, the Bible says in Matthew, when he came the first time, and his own received him not. So you think, well, they had a free will. They didn't choose him. And then right around in some other scriptures, he'll say, and I blinded their eyes that they could not see. What? Why would you do that and then blind them? I don't know. You're going to have to, we'll, we'll know one day. I don't know why he chooses to do that way. That he came, 
He came to his own. He came as the king to be their king. And then they rejected him and they rejected him because he blinded them. And that's what the scripture says. He blinded their eyes. He hard, well, he did that with Pharaoh. Moses goes, does one of these wonders, does something spectacular. Some frogs show up, some flies come on the scene, some grasshoppers and all those things, you know, and, and it's amazing how all of nature follows what God says to do. Anyway, and if he just get his church sometime to do that as good as creation does, but because all creation follows exactly what you ever watch the ocean, it comes, it knows right where it goes, and it comes right back, you know. It's amazing how it's able to contain all that water. Well, that's just the way gravity works. What do you think invented that? You know what I'm saying? You know, so, so anyhow, when we begin to, to put that trust in him, begin to see how, how he's working, but tell me a good place to be is when you're with him yeah. and, and you're held by him and you're held in, in place by him. And, and this is what he's doing. And so these people are out of there and, and, and they're, not, they're not in their place. And, and so they don't have any of these things. But one day, praise God, they're going to be God's covenant people again. They're going to step in to who they're supposed to be. Because God ain't done with them. Because why? There's prophecies. Anytime God prophesies something, it happens. So there are things in the Old Testament that has happened. But there's things that haven't happened yet. And so if it hadn't happened yet, then it's going to happen. It's, it's a fact. It's going to take place. And so the 490 years, 70 weeks of years, have been determined on the nation of, of, of Israel. And so, you know, when I, I was going to put up a timeline today, and I, I chose not to do that for this time. But when you, when you look at the nation of Israel through all their time, you know, God had these timetables set that he would say, 430 years, this is going to take place. This many years is going to do this. 70 years is going to do this. And you could count on it that it was going to be exactly that amount of time. It was set that way. And so he even told them that they were going to be in the Babylonian captivity. He had told them before this that it would be 70 years outside their land. Well, if he said it was going to be 70 years outside the land, guess how long it was going to be? 70 years. And it exactly was, by the way. And the reason why he gave them is because it was the seven weeks of years that he was getting back. Because one of the things that they were required to do under the law is to bring a tenth. And they were also to do it with their land. Their land was for one year out of seven had to, had to be left alone. Not plowed, not planted. You say, well, what are they going to eat during that time? They had what they had set aside for that time. But they got carried away with it, like we do sometimes with truth, and they didn't wait. So they didn't give a year. And so God said, all right, you've taken my years, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my years back. And so you're going under Babylonian captivity. You have no priesthood. You're going to have no temple, and you're going to be there for the seven weeks of years, which is going to be 70 years. And we'll get back what was mine. And that's what God did. That's how he works with the nation of Israel. So the, 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 you know, and so it was the whole purpose was to restore the sabbatical years that they were supposed to do. So again, so the 490 years Israel had forgotten, the, Israel has forgotten sabbatical years. They go through a lot of religious stuff, but they're not walking in what they're supposed to be walking in today. And God told them then, I'm going to do this. There's 490 years. And so when you go all the way up from that time that Daniel prophesied, 490 years, and you take it all the way through the timetable, and I don't have time. I would be here for the next three hours trying to give you all the scriptures. <laughs> but you can study and you can find all this stuff. It's in the scriptures. It's there. It's, it's there. You can get helps with that that will show you all these prophecies. All the way up until... After the crucifixion of Christ, right before Christ ex goes up, it's actually between the Passover and that time, 483 years had taken place with the nation of Israel. Wow. That's why when Peter preached, he preached, now that this has taken place, the next event is the tribulation. Peter thought, well, tomorrow... He's going to set up his kingdom. We're going to rule and reign with him in the kingdom. 
the, the, all that's going to take place. And so for them, the time was not going to stop. We are at 483 years. We got seven more years. So there's seven more years left for the nation of Israel. Prophesied by Daniel, 490 years. It stopped at Passover at 483. Right now, there is no clock ticking for Israel. It is stopped. Ever seen a clock on the wall, got a little second hand, and the battery goes dead, and it just stops. That's the nation of Israel's time has stopped at 483 years. And the only reason it cannot start back is because we are here, the church. Now, that wasn't prophesied. Matter of fact, if you look at, man, I hate I didn't do my, my thing now with my, my chart for you. But when you see the time and it goes all the way up to these guys like Moses and guys like Abraham and all these great patriarchs, David and all these, and it comes all the way up to the cross and then, and then the cross takes place. And, and, and then according to the prophecy, what would be next? It would be, you know, it'd be the tribulation. And then you would see the, the second coming of Christ would come back and it looks like it would all just be already happened by now, but there was this mystery that Paul reveals to us that after the cross, that it wasn't going to pick back up with the 483, 484, 400. No, it stopped there and we're brought in. Romans talks about that. But it even tells us in Romans that if, 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 the, if the first part of Israel was great, the second will be even better when they get back into their place. And it's going to happen. But right now, they're at hold. It's kind of like they do the countdown for the, for the, the space shuttles. And, and man, you know, everybody's watching. We don't really watch it. We don't get as excited about it as we used to. But boy, back when those first spaceships went up back in the 60s and when the space shuttle first started taking off, I mean, we'd all stop what we were doing, you know. Now they do something. Well, yeah, I heard some rocket went up the other day. We don't even pay no attention to it anymore because we've gotten so spoiled and used to all that stuff. But I can remember, man, when, 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 when back in the, in the, in the early, late, late 60s, early 70s, when the first spaceship started going up and, and they would get that countdown. And I remember it during the 80s when the space shuttle and we'd be like, oh, T minus one minute and counting. Boy, everybody's getting excited. You start seeing the smoke come out of the engines and all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, what happened? They stop the clock and they say T minus 10 seconds and holding. You're like, oh man, what happened? What happened? Something happened. Something, they paused and they may come back on and say, well, we're going to delay this till tomorrow. Well, that's what happened with Israel. T minus 483 years and hold. And that's where they are today. Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 says, Now therefore, now know therefore and understand. Daniel wanted them to understand. Paul's telling them in Thessalonians to understand. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be 70 weeks and 62 weeks. All at 490 years. He tells them from when? From here to the Messiah. And that the prince, and look, look what that word prince is, is capitalized. Oh, it's different from verse 26 at the end when he talks about the lowercase. So he says, there shall be 70 weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. And of course, he was cut off because that's when he was crucified. And so this is when their time stopped. And so for all of the nation of Israel, now this is where they are. They're, 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 the Messiah has been cut off and everything is on hold. And what's going to happen when the time clock starts back, the people of the lowercase prince are going to follow the counterfeit. Oh, here's what we're waiting on. Finally, that stop, the clock starts back for Israel. But it's not going to be what they thought. Because there's going to be a deception first. Satan will bring in the deception. Only the remnant will follow the truth. But there's always a remnant, by the way. Just like there's always a remnant of the church. You know, I, I remember I, I, occasionally something will happen. You'll, oh man, uh, uh, the church is just the church. Everybody, I remember good people, 
getting online saying stupid stuff back during 2020. You know, when we had to shut down our, 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 our services, oh, the church is folding in and the church is going under. And I'm like, boy, y'all are so easy to give up. You know, it's like watching my Georgia fans, you know. I mean, you know, we, we, we give up so easy. Oh, we had a rough half. Oh, my goodness, there goes that. We're not going to be able to go undefeated now. Oh, that's the end of that. I, I, I was sitting there yesterday, and, and I'm texting with my cousin, the one that was here last week, and he's on a group text with Darian and my, my, my son and all that. And, man, he was blowing up our phone. I just put him on there if he's watching. I just put him on the text with us, and I and about 10 minutes into the game, I'm thinking, I don't know if I should have put him on because he's just, he won't shut up. He just keeps texting and blowing up our text. We're in trouble this year. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what we're going to do. And, and so, you know, I'm, I'm listening to him, and I'm not listening to my wife who's ever there going, you do this every week. You do this every week. I don't know why you give up so easy. You give this every week. And I'm listening to him, and the next thing you know, I'm like, man, this, we ain't winning. We ain't getting no three-peat this year. These guys, they can't even play football. And, I, and, and my memories came up this morning from Facebook a year ago, and it was a game last year with Missouri, and I was giving up on them in the first half. Man, this is going to be the end of this. We ain't going to be able to win nothing. Who can't win a back-to-back -back playing like we're playing, and of course, we were undefeated that year and won our second back-to-back -back championship, and here I am now fussing, complaining, giving up on my dogs, and we're 5-0, and, and you know, but that's what people do with the church. A little bit of hard time comes and we're like, oh no, I don't, I, this, this, this ain't working. The church is going under and we're folding up and I, woe is us. And it's like, how quick are we to understand that we were created for such a time? 2020 was a time for the church to begin to shine outside the walls because we love our holy huddle more than we like getting out being ambassadors for Christ. So, so God said, I'm going to take what Satan meant for evil, get them boys off the bench and get them out there on the field and they're going to have to do stuff in their community and they're going to have to do stuff on social media to reach the world and not closed up inside their walls. God's got this thing, guys. We need to quit losing hope and falling under every time something doesn't go the way we think it ought to go. God's got a plan, and his plan works, and I just, I'm just i alone for the ride. I don't need to be a backseat driver. Don't, don't, us guys love to have people in the backseat that not tell us how to drive. And we really love it when our spouses try to tell us how to drive. We love that. Thank you, women. Thank you so much, ladies, for helping us how to drive because we could not I am going to get it when I get home. All that to wind up to say is that we need to trust God with his plan. He knows what he's doing. He's given us instructions. He, he has told us, like right now, Psalms 110 says, the Lord God said to my Lord, the Messiah, he said, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Sit at my right hand. Right now, you know, remember, God the Holy Spirit's on the inside of us. God the Son is seated at the right hand. Matter of fact, he is seated at the right hand. Now, here's some good news. Because of the Holy Spirit being in us, Ephesians tells us that we are seated with Him right now in heavenly places. I, I, I can't comprehend that in the flesh because it's not in the flesh. It's in the Spirit. My spirit man is so sealed until the day of redemption that I am already seated with Him in heavenly places. And He is seated right now at the throne room. And He is seated right now at the right hand of God until something takes place. And that is when he will make his enemies his footstool. And, and, and it's only time of time he's going to get up from his seat. And when he gets up, it about to happen. And he's and he going to step out and he's going to say, all right, church, come on. Time to, get, time to get this ball on it. And he calls up the church and he says, we're just up here for a little time. 
That's why Thessalonians didn't say you'll be forever with the, with, with heaven. You'll be forever with the Lord. Because we ain't going to be up here but about seven years before we take off again because we're going back. And so we need to understand that in, in Psalm chapter 2, verse 6, he says, Yet have I set up my king on my holy hill of Zion. See, that's coming. That's prophecy. He's going to set up his kingdom on his holy hill of Zion. That's coming. But he's not there yet. Oh, he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords for the church, for us. But one day he will be that for all. They won't have a choice. That's why the Bible says that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. They won't have a choice. I always say you can bow now or you're going to bow. You better do it now because then it won't matter because then he'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. The writer says, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? See, the, see, these disciples, they thought 483 years, we still got seven years. Is this it? Or is now going to be the time that you're going to set up your kingdom? Why? Why did they say that? Because they know that's all been prophesied. They know that. That's what they were waiting on. So they're thinking, well, you know, he's here. So now's the time. This is why they got so upset when they crucified him because they, it blew their whole timetable out of the way because that what, even though, why? Because they were blinded. They did not see it. Had he not blinded Israel, you know what not, would not have happened? They would not have crucified him. If they knew who he was, they wouldn't have crucified him. Well, he had to die. He had to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament. And so he used their free will of choosing to crucify Christ and yet at the same time it fulfilled God's plan. That is so awesome. We serve a mighty God. And then Acts chapter 2, the writer said, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. So you had Paul talk about the prophet Daniel. You have, you have the writer of Acts. He's talking about who? He's talking about Joel. All, all these things all come together and have a purpose in the end time. And so there's 490 years. We've stopped at 483. And right now we're in what we call the time of grace. Amen. God is pouring out grace. He's not pouring out vexation. He's not pouring out damnation. He's not pouring out tribulation. We have trials, but he's not pouring out. I know, I know sometimes we look around and we go, I just don't know if it can get any worse. And it can, and it usually does tomorrow. It usually does. You know, why? Because Satan is going around like a roaring lion. The Bible says he's the prince, little p, in power of the air. He's going around doing his stuff. And he's getting things, he's getting things because he's working on his plan. It, it, once again, he has a plan. It's going to be his plan with the counterfeit Antichrist. It's going to be his plan with his power and his signs and his lying wonders. But all of it is going to be totally under the control of God who already told him it was going to be this way. It's like when, when, when the Lord looked at Peter and told him, get behind me, Satan. You know, and he already told me, he said, you know, Peter, Satan wants to tempt you, wants to, to sift you like wheat. He said, but I pray for you. Ooh, come on now. When, you know, it, it, when he prays for you. And so Peter's getting this word, you know, because Peter's walking around thinking he's going to be the guy. You know, I'm, I'm it, I'm it, I'm it. We're going to set up your kingdom. Am I on your right or your left, buddy? What, 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 what side do I need to be on? I know you want the most important on the right side, so I want to make sure I lined up where I'm supposed to be. And, of course, John's over here going, well, he loves me. I'm the one he loves, so you know I'm going to be in the play. And so by the way, acting all that it, it, stupidity and stuff, and then he comes on, and, and it's getting down to the end, and he looks over at Peter and says, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. He said, but I prayed for you. And he talked some more, and he ended up telling him, listen, before, man, it ain't got this night over with, and you're going to deny me before we even get to the morning three times. But yet, the God's grace, on the day of Pentecost, who's the one up there preaching, and 2,000, all these people get saved? Wasn't Peter that did the power, but it was Peter that got to do the preaching. Isn't that awesome? So God can use anybody, can't he? He can use me, he can use you. And right now, he's using us 
to share the good news, to share the good news. Let's stand together. I am so excited about end times. I mean, every time I get up and, and I do, I don't read a whole lot of news because I'm not a news guy, um, but I, I do keep up with, with things going on, uh, even though I could just probably just stay in the word of God because it t- told me everything that's going to go on and going on. You know, you know, sometimes we, the church, we get shocked by what happens. But if we'll just find it and keep reading in the word, we're going to find out, oh, yeah, this is what we're, th- this is what is going to happen. You know, we're, we're seeing the foolishness of this world. Yes. We're seeing the darkness. You know, we're seeing that. This is why we don't put our faith in governments. We don't put our faith. You know, I don't care if it's Republican, Democrat, Independent, or none of that stuff. If you're putting yours in, 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 a, in a party, you're, you're going to be sadly disappointed. If you're putting yours in a man, I don't care if you're Democrat and you got your man or your woman. I don't care if you're Republican and you got your man or your woman. I don't care who you think. If you're putting your faith in that person to be the guy or the woman that's going to fix all the problems, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And so church, let's get our eyes. He tells us. Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. We've got too many affections that we're setting in on here on the earth. And so then when it doesn't add up, we lose our ever-loving minds. And we need to go, wait a minute. He done told us this was coming. He done told us how this was going to turn out. He done told us. He uses all these political leaders to do their free choice, but to do his plan. And by the way, The same person that prayed for Peter, he prayed for you. The Bible says that he is our advocate to the Father. He goes before me to the throne on behalf of me and on behalf of you. So whatever you're going through today, whatever you're facing today, I want you to know, yes, your pastor prays for you. I pray for this congregation daily. I pray for you. I pray for you. When I hear specific things, I pray for you and I pray for you. But let me tell you something better than me praying for you is when the advocate goes to the the Father for you. And that's what you have through Jesus Christ. That's what you have through Jesus Christ. Listen, if there's something that you haven't settled in on prayer with today, don't leave here today without getting someone to pray with you. Don't let somebody come in agreement with you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, I don't care how much scripture you think you know. I don't care how happy you think you are right now. I'm going to tell you right now, you need Jesus in your life. And if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, then I'm going to tell you how easy it is. The Bible says that he died for your sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried on the third day. He rose again, according to the scriptures. The Bible says that is the good news, the gospel. Because when he died, he died your death. He took all your sins to the cross. When he rose again, the same power now that rose him from the dead can raise you into eternal life. A life that's full. A life that's in now fellowship with him, in relationship with him that can never be taken away. It's a permanent relationship that you can have with God today. And you can have such security in that. And it doesn't mean that you won't ever have trials in this time, but it means he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And I can tell you right now, I could not do this life without him. And for those that do, I I, I almost said, I don't know how they're doing it. I know how they're doing it. They're not. They're not doing it. That's why the suicide rate and the stuff that we're seeing and people on pills and people on all kind of stuff trying to fix that place that only God can fill. And so so don't leave here today without a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you need more on that, listen, see me, see somebody, and let them lead you in how to just place your faith and trust in Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen.